What's going on, folks? In this lesson, we're going to continue our discussion about modern C++ and talking about async. Now, async, as we've discussed in a previous lesson, is a type of future, and it allows for asynchronous execution. Now, just to illustrate this more clearly, let's go ahead and look at a real-world example. So let's go ahead and look at a favorite YouTube channel. So here we are here. And I'm going to go ahead and click on one of these videos here in our concurrency series. Now, what I want you to notice, though, is the little loading bar that pops up here. So let me go ahead and expand this, and let's pick one from our series. And immediately as I pause, notice in the bottom left-hand corner here that the red is the area of the video that has loaded. But in the background, you can see this gray bar here, and that is the video buffering up or behind the scenes loading some data. So what could be going on here is some sort of asynchronous loading of data. In fact, our file systems actually do this for us and are a great example of an asynchronous part of our hardware. So what I mean by that is our disk is seeking out data or reading data as we're getting ready to display that data for us, whether it's video content or a file that you're opening. So let me go ahead and close the channel, but make sure that you go ahead and click on the subscribe button if you have not already. And let's continue talking about async at this point. So the program that we want to design again is just this idea that we have our main program here. Here's our main uh, program or the main process uh, that's going to be running with the main thread. And in it, it's going to be running in an infinite loop. But on occasion, we might have some other thread that's executing. So here's a peer thread here. And again, it's part of this process. And it's going to be executing asynchronously. So here, I'm just going to draw async. And it's going to be doing some sort of task, maybe loading some data. Now, once that task has completed, it can report back to our main program, and then we can continue our execution to the next block of code. And that could be the idea for a loading setup, for example, if you're trying to load some big asset like a video in the background while your program is running. In fact, a lot of games or graphics applications will try to stream in data in this way to be efficient and not to interrupt the player with a loading screen. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like in our code. I'm going to leave our help page up here just so we can see uh, async here. And again, that's if you hover over the menu and go down a little bit into the future section here, you'll find our async function as well as some other handy commands that we're going to look at. So let's go ahead and start structuring this program. So what I'm going to need here is another future. And I'm just going to have it return some Boolean value, true or false. And this is going to be for some background thread. And again, the goal of this thread is going to be to load some file behind the scenes in our application. So this is going to be some async. And this time, I'm going to actually provide some arguments into our async function. And if we look carefully what the arguments mean, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just highlight this line here. And let me make it actually a little bit bigger uh, for you, just so the text uh, shows up here you'll notice that we have the launch policy. And this is one way to design custom classes in C++ with policies. Okay, you can learn a little bit about this from Alexandrescu's modern CPP book. Uh, but we can either defer our thread from launching to have it sort of lazily evaluated or launch it asynchronously uh, like we're going to intend on. So you're going to see me set the launch policy here, which again, I'll load up and you can see we have uh, two options here. Either launch the thread uh, asynchronously, or we can defer the execution um, and only compute the result once it's requested. And that would be with something like .git, where we are requesting that result is returned from our future. And that's what we've done in a previous video where we have introduced futures. So go ahead back in the playlist to watch that. Okay, so now that we know what the arguments are, let's go ahead and uh, specify uh, those arguments. And I'm going to go ahead and create this background uh, task that's also going to take place. And I'm going to call this the buffered file loader. That's going to be the function name here. Uh, it'll return true just by default here. And again, we need our policy. So std 
the launch policy async, the function that we are launching, that is the next uh, argument here, again, for our function, and then any arguments that we need to uh, pass in here. I'm not going to have any arguments here just to keep this uh, example uh, simple. So this is our buffered file loader. OK, so now what I also want to do is keep track of the status of this task that's going to take place. So we're going to have this background thread that's loading some data for us. And I want to keep track of if that task is actually completed or not. So let's go ahead and create a future status. And as I mentioned, well, where does this exist? Let's go into our help, the thread support library, scroll down to the future section, and you can click on future status and see the various status. So recall again with futures, you can do a dot git, which requests the result to be computed. And that could return ready, for example, if it's ready. Uh, it might time out if it's taken too long, or the task might be deferred. OK, so that's going to tell us whether or not our result has been computed. OK, so here is our main program loop. And this would be common in something like a gaming application or some application that's just supposed to run indefinitely. So let's go ahead and just say while true. So it's going to run forever until the user decides not to. And I'm just going to go ahead and print out a message here and say that the main thread is running. And this is going to just print out indefinitely so we know for executing in the main thread. And let's just add a little bit of artificial sleep just to make this program a little bit realistic. Again, if it's a gaming application, it would take maybe 16 milliseconds or 33 milliseconds a frame to execute. So uh, some artificial sleep for our program. And what I'm going to do here is, again, use this thread for the currently executing thread, sleep4. And I'm going to use the uh, chrono library to sleep for a specified amount of seconds here, 50 uh, milliseconds. And then um, continue on here. So what I want to do here in my main loop is then query if our background thread uh, has completed. And I'll do that with status here. So the status can check, well, has our background thread, is it ready? Is there a result ready? So let's go ahead and do status equals background thread dot wait for. And I'm going to go ahead and do chrono milliseconds and just one millisecond here. OK, so let's go ahead and look at what wait for is actually doing here, because this is, again, something new. I'm going to go in my thread support library and scroll down to the future and wait for. And this waits for the result and returns if it is not available for the specified timeout duration. So I can go ahead and click on this here. And again, this is going to perhaps block for one second just to check the status. And that gives our background thread a little bit of time to prepare its result, which we will uh, add in a moment to our code here. OK, so just wanting to show you everything that's going on. And now what we want to do is say, if our data is ready, that is, our background thread has completed, then we'll terminate this main loop or perhaps do some work with the background data. So how do I do that? Well, I check if status equals std future status. Again, that was this object type here. And then one of the enums that was available is ready. So we want to be able to, again, once this background thread has computed its result, however it's going to do that, and returned a Boolean value, whether it's true or false, but regardless, we'll know or have captured a result from this function, then we can proceed on with whatever this code is. And what I'm going to do for this program is I'm just going to say, see out, our data is ready. And just do a end line here, and then we'll break out of our loop. Now we might want to trigger some other function or change some other status. Uh, but again, our program is uh, relatively simple here. We just have a, a simple program. here. OK, so let me make this a little bit bigger just so you can uh, see everything here uh, in one line. And I'll get rid of this little mark here. OK, 
So now that I have this, let's go ahead and deal with our buffered file loader here. And what this is going to do is load some sort of data. Now I could open a file or sort of read in some bytes, um, maybe one byte at a time or in sort of chunks here. Uh, I'm going to do something a little bit uh, simpler here just to simulate what would go on and just have a number of bytes uh, loaded. And again, this might be for a particular asset that you have if you're in a gaming context or a file that you're reading or configuration, whatever it may be. Uh, and I'm just going to have an infinite loop here that runs, uh, or at least it runs while bytes loaded is less than you know, some reasonable value here, let's say 20,000. And this thread's going to print out. So I'm going to put from the thread, loading file, and just an end line here. And again, just to make this sort of reasonable, let's say there's a little bit of latency, and let's pause this thread uh, just for a moment here. So I'm going to have it sleep for uh, just a few seconds here. Now, in practice, you're probably not going to want to put these sleeps in your threads. You're going to want them to execute as fast as possible. But again, I just want this um, to be a realistic or a reasonable example. So I want to add a little bit of artificial work. And let's say every time that this loop executes, it's loading, you know, a thousand bytes of data. So this is going to have to run 20 iterations. So again, imagine this as a disk seeking for information or just doing some background tasks. And this can always return true for our purpose. OK, so let me go ahead and save that. And let's go ahead and give this a compile. Uh, and let me add one more line here uh, just at the end uh, for program is complete. And we'll just add an M right there. OK, let's check for any code mistakes, and then we'll proceed forward. So of course, I'm using uh, C++, a version uh, that is at least modern C++, 17 most of the time uh, that I'm working here. This is the async buffer example. And I'll, I'll put this as prog. And because I'm using threads, I need to link in uh, the thread library. here. And one mistake here at line 9. Looks like a uh, little uh, typo here for bytes loaded. And uh, one more typo, missing an S. And there we go. So let's go ahead and run this. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger just so we can see what's going on here. Uh, now, I'll run this program. And you're going to go ahead and see that, well, this is running here. And intermittently, you'll see that the thread is loading some file here. That is, it's running this loop here uh, on the left side of the screen. And the main thread is also executing. So just based off of these printout statements, we have a pretty good idea that these two threads are running at the same time, even regardless if they're sleeping a portion of that time, That's which is OK. Um, let me make sure you folks can see that. Uh, and until our data is actually ready. That means that this function here, buffered bytes loaded, has actually completed. And then once uh, that's true, just to go ahead and show you down here. So that means our future has a result that has been computed, whether it was true or false, right? because this is a true or false value. It's a Boolean. Uh, and then we can proceed to execute whatever this condition is, which just breaks us out of our loop and then prints out that the program is complete. So this is, again, an example of what we highlighted here, where we have our main process running, a thread running asynchronously, Again, it's asynchronously because, well, that's the policy that we said we wanted to execute. That is, as soon as we uh, create this future here and instantiate it with this uh, async here, then it is going to uh, execute immediately. And then our program will eventually finish once the result is complete. OK, so let me go ahead and just run this one more time because I think it's a pretty neat uh, program here. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, though, just so you can uh, see more on the screen uh, all at once. <laughs> For folks who have a uh, larger monitor, uh, I'll go ahead and run this. And again, you can see the main thread is running. That's this loop here. And intermittently, we are also loading data or streaming in that data in the background. All right, so as always, the code is available if you uh, need it uh, in the repository. And that's going to be it for this lesson. So this is a really cool lesson in my mind because then we can really understand what async is doing. It's a little bit of a pragmatic example. 
meaning that you can start thinking about how you might load data behind the scenes asynchronously and then only be blocked when you actually need the results of that data, whether you call .git or are doing some other check in your program. So if you've enjoyed this, go ahead and like and subscribe. And thanks again for watching.